Hey guys, Levi here from Zero Fox Given. Wanted to talk to you today a little bit about tripods. Uh, see it all the time in the groups, Facebook pages, Instagram, forums, etc. Guys looking to get into the sport, wanting advice for beginner tripods, an entry level setup, budget level setup, um, and then guys looking to upgrade, looking for advice. You know, they've got a bog now or a slick and want something a little bit better. Uh, you see recommendations from don't buy a tripod, buy a set of shooting sticks to go out and drop $1,500 on a really right stuff RRS setup. Uh, so we wanted to put, a, put together a little video for you guys today, going through some of the entry level tripods, some of the uh, more expensive setups out there, the various attachment methods, clamps, arc rail, Picatinny, and uh, get that information to you, make some recommendations on what has worked for us over the years. We've had a lot of tripods we've ran, probably six or seven now, and uh, have that information there for you guys to make a better informed decision on where you're gonna spend your money. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll start going through it. Thank you. Okay, first up, we have the Bog Death Grip Tripod. It is probably the most common, most recommended, and killed more dogs than any other tripod out there. Um, you see a lot of beginners running it, guys who have been hunting a long time running it, and uh, probably the most recommended tripod for either beginners or people looking for a most uh, more advanced tripod. Huge following. Uh, pretty cheap. You know, the basic bog aluminum death grip starts around 180 uh, a little over 200 for the camo version, and then they have a more expensive carbon fiber version out there. Um, some pros on it, um, it's cheap, first off. Um, also, you get a clamp set up at the top, meaning you can basically put any gun you have in it. Uh, you got one adjustment on the back to tighten the clamp or loosen the clamp. So you can just drop your gun down in there, crank it tight, and your gun is fairly secure. I'll say fairly. Uh, to get something, you know, a gun like this, got a pretty slick wood stock on it, um, it can still move around in that clamp zone, even when you have it clamped down very tight. A uh, little bit of a drawback. Um, your tilt adjustment is the big knob on the other side, lets you tilt the gun up and down. And then your pan adjustment, this little knob here, lets you pan back and forth. One drawback to that is it takes two different adjustments, two knobs you have to loosen in order to move the gun around. Um, and this tripod does not have a center stock, a post in the center to let you adjust elevation. So if you want to move your gun up or down, you have to adjust all three tripod legs. Um, one drawback to that, if you're not on, with this head, the bog head, if you're not on level ground, um, and you don't adjust your legs to level the top of the tripod, when you go to pan, your gun's gonna tilt, even if you have it level at the horizon, um, because there's no roll adjustment on top of that. Um, so that's a little bit of a drawback. Nice thing is, it's got a built-in level on the top, so you can look at that and see when the tripod is level. Um, but yeah, pretty basic. Um, works with about any gun you want to put on it. Um, one drawback, in my opinion, on the clamp setup, whether it's a bog, a uh, coke figure, reaper grip, or even the more expensive, nicer hog saddle clamps, is they're really only good for guns. Um, it's harder to put other stuff in there to use. Uh, right now, I'm recording this with an iPhone, with an iPhone adapter on Arca Rail. So it's pretty handy. It's a little bit more difficult or impossible, depending on what it is, to put a spotting scope in here. So that's definitely a drawback. Um, one thing I use my tripods for is to hold my chronograph. It will not fit in the bulk. It's too wide. Um, so it's, it's universal, but pretty much for guns only. Pretty hard to put other stuff in there. There's a lot of different things you can use tripods for. Um, so next up, we're going to talk about the Slick 700 and some of its clones. Um, probably the next most recommended beginner tripod you see. Once again, it's a fairly budget option, but it lets you run a ball head. So that's coming up. Okay, um, next up, I'm going to talk about some of the Slick 700 metal tripods and their clones. Um, it's another entry-level tripod. Um, pretty cheap, aluminum legs and construction like the ball, no carbon fiber. Um, 
you can find the actual Slick 700 on Amazon for around 120. Uh, this tripod, it was actually my first. It is a Shadow Tech Pig Field Tripod. It's basically a green painted version of the Slick 700. Um, overall, the tripod itself is pretty similar to the Bog. It's a little bit lighter, um, but it still has the three section aluminum legs, um, but it does have the center stock. Um, so what that does is it lets you move the gun up and down to change your elevation without having to adjust all three tripod legs. Um, this pretty handy, but it's really, really comes down to personal preference. Um, when I ran this tripod full time, I never really used it. Um, Ethan, one of our guys, he has a PT Deadeye tripod and he uses his center stock all the time. Um, so it's what works for you. One nice thing about this tripod is it has the platform on top with the standard 3 8 16 stud sticking up. So it lets you run your choice of ball head. Um, so you get a lot of choices there, but you have to buy something else. One nice thing about the bog is you buy the bog, you get everything you need in the box, and then you're done. You can throw your gun on it, go shoot, go hunt. Whereas this, you now have to make another decision as to what head you're going to run. Um, there's hundreds of options on the market, um, so I'll talk a little bit about this one. This is an NRL 52 millimeter ball head off Amazon. Um, it's a standard non-inverted ball head. So it has a large ball here that clamps that when you loosen it, lets you move the gun any which way, all over. You have pan, tilt, and you can roll it back and forth. One nice thing about that over the bog is if your tripod is not perfectly level and you go to pan, you can keep the gun perfectly upright. Um, this does not have a built-in level like the bogs do. Uh, one drawback, but once you start having the versatility of the ball head, you don't really need it. It doesn't matter if your tripod's not perfectly level most of the time. Uh, this ball head has an Arca adapter on top. It's a form of a dovetail, a little bit bigger than a Picatinny. Um, so if you run an Arca plate on your gun or anything else, it lets you slide it in, clamp it, and you're done, you're attached. Uh, there's no big clamp up there you're trying to clamp around the rail so the nice thing with that is it does not take up rail space so if you have sling mounts you're running an apex 3d battery pack a rangefinder etc it's not taking up valuable real estate okay now that we've covered some of the beginner level budget setups going to talk a little bit more about some of the more expensive nicer carbon fiber tripods and what's available out there um, most of them are going to run a platform with a bowl, meaning the center section here on the tripod is replaceable. So you can run a bowl head, a ball head, an inverted ball head, the really right stuff, Anvil 30, which I have here, um, and it's a, a standard. Most of them are 75 millimeter, so it lets you use a standardized, non-brand specific center bowl on these to let you run different heads, which is pretty nice. Um, most of them are three or four section legs to give you a little bit more adjustment. Um, and they're lighter. That is the single biggest thing about carbon fiber tripods. They're a lot lighter than the, the aluminum tripods out there and they're not as noisy. So if something hits the leg, it's not nearly as loud as the same thing hitting the leg on an aluminum tripod. So what I run now, this is a two vets, no name tripod, um, which I believe is now discontinued. Um, we use Zach over at Mid America Optics for our two vet stuff. Been pretty happy with them. Um, it's kind of a lower end or middle of the road carbon fiber tripod. I'm a shorter guy. I don't need something that is six feet tall in order to shoot. If I'm getting a tripod that tall, I'm, there's extra weight there I don't want. So I like this because it's very, very light and it doesn't go very tall, um, which I don't need. The lightness is nice. If you've got a few hundred yard walk from the truck out to a stand, I want to cut as much weight as possible out of my setup. Um, so this has been great for that. 
Um, it's very sturdy, even though it's very light, weighs almost half as much as the uh, Pig, the Slick 700 copy I had. Um, it's still sturdier. It's a more stable shooting platform than a lot of the aluminum tripods out there. A um, little bit more on leg wraps. Uh, I talked about the lace-up ones before. These are from Sunrise Tactical. I bought them through Short Action Precision. Um, they're a very nice Cordura multi-cam lace-up leg cover. So there's a lot of padding there. Um, they're soft. They have molly slots on here, so you can put various attachments on there if you want to get a pouch, um, something like that. It does have a built-in level on top, so you can level the tripod because it does have no center stock. Um, as far as carbon fiber tripods go, we've got a couple. Um, this is one. Will runs the Night Stalker Pro Tripod from Night Goggles. Um, I've hunted with that one before too. Um, it's an awesome tripod. It's uh, very sturdy, takes a standard 75 millimeter bowl so you can run different heads. It comes with a ball head, so it's a package deal. So it's a lot of value for your money. You're getting a nice carbon fiber tripod with the ball head. Like the ball, you have everything in the box you need to set it up go hunt, as long as you have an archer plate for your gun. Um, but it's too tall for me. That's why I sold it to Will. I don't need all that extra height. Sasquatch, Will, does. Um, so it's worked out great for him. Um, Next up, I'll talk a little bit about the Lloyd Wright Stuff Anvil 30 head and what I like about it. Okay, so I've talked about a couple beginner uh, level setups, some budget setups, gone over the clamp on the bog uh, and the ball head. Um, a little bit of general stuff about some of these tripods. Um, I've done it, some of the guys I hunt with have done it, you see it a lot of times, is the legs get wrapped. Um, there's a lot of options out there on the market. Um, Coltac makes them. Some tripods come with leg wraps that Velcro over the leg. And uh, there's some lace-up kinds, which you'll see here in a bit. What I did on this, a um, couple of us have done it, is you buy the self-adhesive camo gauze off Amazon. It's 15 bucks for a dozen rolls of it. Um, you wrap several layers of it around the legs. It's kind of camo. Um, but, but it quiets it down. So if you have something that hits these aluminum legs, it's not nearly as loud. Also, you know, you're primar primarily co coyote hunting in the winter, um, it helps keep it insulated a little bit. So if you grab this camo wrap with gloves on, it's not trying to pull heat out of your hand. Whereas if you have the bare aluminum leg, even with gloves on, you, gra you grab a hold of that to carry it, move it, whatever, it pulls a lot of heat out of your glove, out of your hand, and really can make your hands cold. Um, so this is a really cheap upgrade to pretty much any tripod, um, and something a lot of people do. So I would highly, highly recommend it, whether you want to go the cheap route, use some gauze off Amazon, or if you want to spend the money on some of the higher end leg wraps out there. Okay, now we've kind of gotten into ball heads a little bit in that last segment. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more in depth about ball heads, the different kinds out there, and the various features on them. Um, so this is my Interrail ball head um, off Amazon. It was around 110 bucks. Um, it's one of the best ball heads I've ran. Um, between the, the two vets, the Vortex, etc., cetera, um, it's a lot of ball head for the money. Um, as I said, it's got the Arca adapter on top so you can kind of see the dovetail in here um, one thing i don't like about this ball head is it does not open wide enough for an arca plate to drop in straight from the top you have to slide it in from the front or the back um, which is a little hard to do in the dark um, it's easier to just open your clamp up drop your arca plate in and then tighten it down um, it does have a knob with the screw to tighten and loosen it. I prefer the lever lock style, um, but this works pretty well. Uh, it's got the large knob on the side that loosens the ball head and lets you pan, tilt, roll any which way. Um, this is a non-inverted ball head, so if you start panning and you're behind the gun, the knob stays in the same spot. Um, unless you loosen an additional knob on the back this little guy here, that lets the ball head rotate with you. But then you have to hold it and turn it with the gun. Um, whereas an inverted ball head is basically the same setup turned upside down. 
So your ball is then attached to the tripod with what clamps the ball attached to the gun. Um, so when you loosen it and pan, your adjustment knob goes with you. You don't have to hold on to it and turn it with you. Um, so the invert style is a lot handier in my opinion. Um, it's easier to keep track of. The knob is always in the same place in relation to the gun. Otherwise, they work pretty much the same way. Um, one note on ball heads. In my opinion, the bigger the ball, the more stable and secure it's going to be. They're typically measured in millimeters, anything from 20 up to about 55 millimeters. Uh, there's some 60s floating around as well. And you want one as short as possible. The higher up your gun is in relation to the ball, the more stable it's going to be. Um, it doesn't try to tip over as much. So you want to keep it as low profile as possible to increase your stability. Okay, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the Really Right Stuff Anvil 30 inverted ball head I'm currently running. Um, some of the awesome features about it, what I like, and how some of that compares to some other heads on the market. So first off, you see the large dovetail on top for your arca rail. One thing I like about this head is it opens wide enough for the arca plate to drop straight in from the top. I don't have to slide it in from the front or the back. That lets me run screws on my arca plate in the front or the back so it can't slide out. Um, so it's contained in there. A lot more secure, a lot more peace of mind. Also, on the really right stuff heads, um, you see this bottom dovetail in here. That is for Picatinny. So when you tighten it up, that will clamp on standard 1913 Picatinny rail like you have on a quad rail on your AR. So it lets you put a standard, more common um, attachment method in there versus ARCA. One awesome and really handy thing about this is if your pistol has a rail, you can clamp the front rail on your pistol in here which comes in extremely useful for zeroing, zeroing red dots on a pistol. Um, haven't seen many people do that. Um, we do it here at Zero Fox Given. Um, works extremely, extremely well versus trying to shoot offhand to get your optic zero. One thing I really like about this Anvil 30 is how you clamp the Arca rail. It is a lever versus the knob. So it's a lot easier to use, especially with gloves on. It's more secure. And it has a lock on it. So here my, it's in the clamped and locked position. It will not open up unless I first push down on the latch. Then I can unlatch it, unlock it to get my gun out. So it's not going to catch a piece of clothing, catch a piece of gear, open up, and let your gun fall out. So it's very secure, very well thought out. Also, one of the things I really like is instead of a big knob, you get this big lever. Um, so when it's forward, it's in the locked position, and then you can open it up to the fully unlocked position, letting this head move everywhere freely, or run it in the middle to get a little bit of tension on there. Um, and because it's an inverted style, this goes with your gun no matter where you have it pointed. You're not trying to find that knob like you have on a standard ball head. And this makes a nice place to put your hand. So when you're on the gun, panning around, tilting, whatever, your hand can be on this lever um, to help keep everything secure and steady for shooting, but still have the tension adjustment right there. So you can have it loose to follow a runner, to be scanning, and then if you see a dog come out, you can start to tighten it up to give yourself a more stable shooting platform. So that works extremely, extremely well. Um, it's the favorite, my favorite head I've ever run. Out of different ball heads, inverted ball heads, the Anvil 30 is the best I have personally found. The drawback, very expensive, about 350 bucks, give or take, for the Anvil 30 head. Um, it will go on a standard 3816 tripod stud, but I highly, highly recommend getting the bowl made just for the Anvil 30. It gets it down lower, and it makes it a lot more secure. Um, it's got a tapered cone in there that locks it in place with four screws from the bottom. Um, so an inverted ball head will kind of be closer to this. Um, give you a lot of the same features without the cost. I know Fatboy has a new one out. You can 
find various inverted ball heads on Amazon. Um, it's pretty good in between for, you know, something like the Anvil 30 versus a standard ball head. So just more options. More options are good. Okay, I wanted to talk real quick about some of the different Arca plates out there. Um, right here, I have a Shadow Tech Arca plate made for M lock rails. It goes right on standard M lock attachments. Um, it's pretty cheap. It's nice. It's not very long, so it doesn't take up much rail space. Uh, can't really knock it. And here on my current hunting rifle, I have, once again, M lock. It's longer. This is from Annex Defense. That's uh, FDE anodized. You can kind of see it under there. Um, goes right on the M lock. But because it's longer, in the back, I have two cap screws here. Then there's this little lip in the front. Um, and what that does is it keeps this Arca plate from sliding out of the head. If your head loosens up a little bit, you don't have it quite tight, it doesn't let it slide out and fall like your shadow tech or smaller arca plates like that will um, so more secure a lot more peace of mind especially when you have a lot of money sitting on top of your uh, tripod so i highly recommend uh, the annex defense or ones like it um, because of that provision you see on there the other arca plate i wanted to talk about is the area 419 defense universal plate um, this is just a f is flat on the back with a couple mounting holes, you can see here, one of which is in a slot. Um, I put this on my Boyd's At One stock, on my Ruger American Rim Rimfire, which had no provision for attaching anything. So I used the front forearm mounting hole for the front screw, then I drilled and counterboard in, on the inside, in the barrel channel, for the back mounting screw. So this is a great Arca plate to use on a wood or synthetic stocked gun in order to get them Arca compatible and on top of your tripod. Um, the downside is you're gonna have to drill. Okay guys, um, so that is most of what we wanted to cover today in our Tripod 101 video, kind of getting some of the basics out there, some entry level setups, some budget setups, plus some of the nicer stuff available on the market. Um, my personal recommendation, if you are new to coyote hunting, new to shooting off a tripod, and you're looking for a more budget entry level setup, is to buy a slick or a copy of it with a ball head, an entry level ball head off Amazon. I'm a big fan of the NRLs. They're a lot of ball head for the money. Um, they work well. They hold up to years of abuse. I used mine for a couple years, tossed it in the back of the truck, bouncing around all night, and have not had any issues with it. Um, and why I recommend that, because you can get into that setup for about the same amount of money as a bog, and it's a lot more versatile. You have the center stock adjustment on the tripod, you have the adjustability of the ball head without any of the roll issues like you get on a bog, and it, Arca just lets you use everything. Um, you can run a spotting scope on there, a chronograph on there, an iPhone adapter on there, uh, PBS 14, anything you want to put, anything you can mount to an Arca rail, you can run under tripod. Um, so it's a lot more versatile, a lot more mounting options or things you can mount on it versus the clamp in the bulk for the same amount of money. Um, the only reason I would personally recommend to someone as to why you should get the bulk is if you have an older heirloom gun that you can't easily mount an Arca rail to or you don't want to, you don't want to drill the stock to get that Arca rail on there. In that situation, the clamp is probably a lot better option for you. Um, you can just toss the gun in there, clamp it down, and be good to go. Um, that said, there are some better clamps out there on the market that you can run on top of a ball head um, versus the bog, where it's their head set up. Um, the Kilfager Reaper Grip, that's a solid option, and the Hog Saddle or Pig Saddle. Um, those are some of the nicer ones on the market. They clamp better, they're a little bit more secure. You can toss them on top of your preferred ball head or inverted ball head and uh, still get that same clamping feature that you get with bulk, but you're gonna pay a little bit more. Um, so I hope I answered the questions for people. Um, hope guys out there in the market for uh, new to them, uh, their first tripod, got a lot of good stuff out of this. 
Um, if there's any questions, please drop them in the comments, shoot us a message. We'll do everything we can to get your questions answered um, about a specific piece of equipment, you know, some general questions or recommendations. Um, so thank you for watching. Please give us a like, give us a follow on our social media. We appreciate it and hope to have more videos coming in the future. Thank you.